Hey guys, we're back on naval subject matter again this week. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at one of Dragon's 1/350th scale kits of the USS Laffey in 1942. Let's open her on up and take a look. All right, uh, first sprue up, we're going to be dealing with our two main deck sections, which I've done in this split configuration. Uh, main complaint here is there's not a lot of uh, surface detailing. Obviously, these decks would have a little bit of you know, non-slip material coated on them, which they do via decal, but it would have been nice had they molded that detail in. Uh, continuing on with this sprue, we also have our two main drive shafts and our props, as well as a few other little odds and ends on this sprue and a rudder. Moving on, we have our main hull bottom. Overall, detailing is adequate and should provide a nice option for the hull, full hull. Uh, you will have to drill out the mounting holes for the base, which we'll get to in a little bit. Next up, we've got our mid hole section, which is nice that it does give you an option to do as either a waterline or full hole kit. Again, the split in the lower and upper decking is more obvious here. And even just doing this with the whole piece, as you can tell, the fit is quite nice. There's a little bit of give here, but I believe that's mostly due to the parts still being on the sprue. Continuing on now, got some odds and end detail parts relating to the superstructure. And speaking of the superstructure, we've got most of the forward superstructure contained on this sprue. There's not a lot of molded on detail, which does mean you're going to be adding it on as separate parts, which is both good and bad. Continue on, we've got two sets of sprues for the ship's main 5 inch guns. Uh, it is nice that they give you two options for the guns, either the bagged or the unbagged versions. As for the detail on the turrets themselves, it's surprisingly adequate. Obviously, big difference you can tell with this kit compared to the uh, California we viewed not that long ago. And really tells gives you a sense of just how much of a size difference there is with this a destroyer being roughly the same size as a battleship in 700 scale versus Again, a destroyer in 350th scale. Continuing on, we've got parts for one of the gun controllers and a few other odds and ends on this sprue. Next up, we've got more weaponry, and this time consisting of A guns, as well as two options for yeah. the torpedo launchers, either a quad or a quint. Uh, for the Laffy, you're going to be using the Quint. It is nice. They do give you the option for a four if you want to potentially build it as one of Laffy's sisters or an earlier configuration. Uh, moving on, uh, we've got our main base. And I think they did this in such a way that it can be used on multiple products based on the, this numbering system they have on the back. As in the instructions, which we'll see in a little bit, they tell you which holes to drill out. So... I think this was really smart on Dragon's part, and that's a smart bit of engineering. Next up, even though it's still in the plastic, and hopefully this will show up without too much of a reflection, is a set of 1 3 of scale figures, a total of six of them. Uh, it is a nice inclusion, though. If you really, really hate yourself, you would try and find a full crew set in 350 scale, have them fully painted and molded as if they were at action stations. Though I would say only do that if you really hate yourself. So 
Uh, continuing on, we now move on to a lot of the detailing parts. As I said, very little is molded on. So you're going to be clipping out and adding all these parts. We also have full rack for depth charges, which again, hopefully it will show up. Life boats and other odds and ends. Continuing on, we now have more superstructure parts. Again, you can really start to see just how much detail is left off that you're going to need to add on as far as, you know, attaching parts, which, as I said, is good and bad. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more time-consuming, but will ultimately look better in the end. Finally, we're finishing up with just about last bit of details. Overall, despite being very tiny, they're quite impressive. And before I forget, last bit is our stand part. Again, this will probably look fantastic once you get painted up in a nice metallic gloss. Now, excuse me while I get these back in. Now, you do get a fair amount of photo etch with this kit, uh, including a slew of various parts. I forgot to take this out. Uh, including various odds and end details. As I mentioned before, you do get a fairly decent number of decals, including all the signals and flags you're going to need, uh, clear parts for the searchlights, additional photo etch for all the ladders, though you surprisingly don't get any photo etch for railings. That that surprised me a little. And lastly, sheet decals for the walkways and uh, hole numbers. As I said, it would have been nice had they done this all as molded on detail instead of as a decal. Oh, excuse me while I get this back in its little sheet home. Keep it protected. Now let's move on to the instructions. Now this is a very complicated build sequence as you will be adding a lot of small detail parts. Uh, as I said, this is the downside of them choosing to not mold on a lot of detail. So you will be spending a lot of time attaching a large number of sm very small parts. So that is something to be aware of and you're gonna have to take extra care in this process simply because it's gonna be very easy to lose a small part. Obviously though, once you do get her built up, it will look very fantastic. Especially even without the railings, just the inclusions of the ladders, some of the other photo etch parts will significantly add to this kit. But overall, it's pretty straightforward construction, building up each of the superstructure sections, attaching them to the deck, putting the holes together, and then attaching the decks to the hull. Only thing I would say, do make sure if you are going to do full hole and use the supplied base that you do do that before you close everything up as if not, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, only a single painting option, again, for the Laffy. Uh, interesting enough, they do give you in uh, Mr. Color options. Granted, given the ages of the this kit, they may have subsequently released colors that are more closely to the actual colors. So that is something you may need to do a little research on, as especially for the uh, decking, they do give you a color mix option. So that is something to look into. So what do I think of this kit? Given the amount of detail and time you're gonna need, the, into this. Um, this isn't one I would say you should you know, make your first naval kit just because it's going to probably give you a large number of headaches. Uh, doubly so since there's a large number of small parts that could very easily be consumed by the floor monster. And yeah, this is one you're going to want to take a little extra care with. However, that care will be more than amply rewarded once you do get her finished. So that was a look at 
Dragon's 1/350th scale USS Laffy in 1942. A very detailed kit that you're going to need to spend some time on. So, until next time. <laughs>